Hey guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell here and welcome to another edition of WWE It's a New Day where we try and take the WWE from its terrible slumber in real life where it's just horrible at the moment or at least until I'm recording this, they may have had a good go home show and we try and make the WWE exciting again Now, with the um, announcement of TW 2016 pretty recently what I'm thinking is, with that due for a release in the second quarter, I think we'll probably run this series right up until uh, WrestleMania. Um, I don't want to kind of stop it and like say uh, an Extreme Rules or um, Payback. I'd rather, if I'm going to finish it, finish it on a WrestleMania. So then ideally, I can just progress with a lot more episodes of We Are Wrestling. And then maybe the first month after TW is out, once, we, well, once there's a potential of a few mods being out there, once we're able to convert some of the older ones, um, I'm looking probably to go with, um, probably go back to TNA, I think. But we'll cover that in other episodes. As I say, it's all about the Royal Rumble. Hopefully, um, it's an alright show. I'd like to think we've booked it well. I went kind of old school in the fact there's a lot of um, hype vignettes. Like, normally you get the segments where people are backstage in a green screen. And um, they'll cut the promo. So I went with that kind of one. So there's a lot of segments, but it's mostly guys hyping up that they're going to win the Royal Rumble. So uh, all I can say guys is there's 5 pre-show matches, 21 segments. I hope you enjoy my version of the Royal Rumble and of course tonight enjoy the actual Royal Rumble. And we're booking it in the Stop Up Centre, which is a sellout, excellent. So our first match, in about they had some solid in-ring action but non-existent crowd heat. We had Big Cass defeat Zack Ryder in 8 minutes and 29 by pinfall with an East River Crossing. D46, that's okay, we're building Cass up just in case Enzo decides to come up anytime soon. Zack Ryder seemed off his game, great chemistry between both. Big Cass is improving his flying skills, and the negatives here are actually mostly Zack Ryder. Who would have thought? Next up and about, they had some solid in action, but not much in the way of heat, where Xavier Woods defeat Damien Sandow in 739 by pinfall. We'll just say it was by Lost in the Woods. D minus 39, Xavier Woods has a dreadfully stale character, which according to some people is the way the new day is going. I personally disagree, but uh, some people are starting to feel that could be the case. He was off his game, Kofi did some good work at ringside. No skill improvements, which is disappointing. But overall, just a match to put Xavier Woods over. Rest in peace, Francesca the trombone. And PSA says we have to change his character. That's cool, that's cool. We'll work on that after the show. And about they had some solid in ring action but non existent crowd heat. We had Becky Lynch defeat Tamina in 8.25 with a pinfall by Hard Knocks, apparently. D43 Tamina off our game. No skill improvements, but again, just a match to put over the last kicker. All negatives there for the length or for Tamina, as to be expected. And about they had some solid in action but non existent crowd heat. Chad Gable and Jason Jordan defeated the team of Curtis Axel and R Truth in 848 when Chad Gable defeated Curtis Axel by pinfall. D43, I didn't want to use Miz because I felt like he should be above Gable and Jordan at the moment, but Truth and Axel is a good hand to put in with them. They've obviously got great chemistry, R Truth improving his performance skills, but overall just another match to put over Gable and Jordan. And then an awful match, it was completely devoid of heat. Bailey defeats Alicia Fox in 742 with a hugplex. Or the Bailey to Bailey. Either or, it doesn't really matter. Bailey wins, that's the main point. We're getting her over. E plus 32, she had to come out of development. We'll try and write it into a script before WrestleMania, it might be a bit difficult. But overall, Bailey gets a bit of momentum with victory here. <coughs> Pardon me. So the dark matches are over, and the arena goes dark. We get the WWE signature package, then, now, forever. We get a Royal Rumble hype promo before the pyro goes off and we are handed over to two of the announcers tonight in the form of Michael Cole and JBL. Michael Cole says, hello everyone and welcome to one of the last stops before WrestleMania, the chance to punch your ticket to the main event. It is of course the highly prestigious Royal Rumble, of course being a lot more prestigious than the Slammies. GBL says, that's right, Maggle, 30 men will enter, one man will make it to the showcase of the Immortals. Michael Cole says, Bray Wyatt, John Cena, Roman Reigns, 
Finn Balor, just to name a few. What a stacked Royal Rumble match we have this evening. And JBL says, and that's not all. The matter of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is on the line as Dean Ambrose welcomes the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar to his asylum. So a C plus 71. Michael Cole needs to change his gimmick, or his character. JBL has switched to a business executive gimmick, which gets an initial 95. And two of storylines advance with this opening segment. We start the show off with a match graphic, basically just showing an opening contest that it's going to be the triple threat match for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It's going to be the City Cowboys of James Storm and Robert Roode defend their titles against the former champs Kofi Kingston and Big E of the New Day and the newly formed alliance between Sheamus and Bad News Barrett. C63, nice way to start the show. The match itself ran about the same rating and about the featured great action and average heat. The City Cowboys defeated the New Day and Bad News Barrett and Sheamus in 10 minutes and 30. The New Day were out first and then Bad News Barrett and Sheamus. The City Cowboys make defence number 3 of their WWE World Tag Team titles. A C62, not too bad. Could be a bit better. Sheamus and Barrett seem to do better in promos, but as it is, as the WWE in this mod. Tag storyline advances, James Storm is off his game. Big E and Sheamus improving technical skills. Negatives here. Prestige, length, the cold crowd. A couple of poor gimmicks and a bit of inconsistency in there, but overall we could have maybe bumped it up to about 63 or 64. But nothing overly spectacular. Next up, in true WWE fashion, we'll be having a series of promos pre Royal Rumble with each superstar signaling their intention of winning the match. First up is John Cena. Cena says 29 other men in this Rumble, including all four members of the Wyatt family. That is, of course, if they make it that far. Rest assured, if me and Kane don't take you out for good earlier in the night, then we will in the Royal Rumble match. You want some? Come get some. OK, promo by Cena, a B-74, and John Cena improvise well during the segment. Negatives, Cena's low morale, I cannot get him to cheer up, so um, get ready for Super Cena in the future. And the poor gimmick that he has at the moment. Our first, well, our second match of the night, sorry, that had some good action and not much in the way of heat. Charlotte defeated Paige in 937 by pinfall. Charlotte makes defence number 4 of her Divas title. A C-57, that's not too bad for a Divas match in this mod at the moment. Um, the Divas storyline progresses, no skill improvements. Only negative was the title prestige still well booked. Um, as I say, it was not too early to take the title off Charlotte, but there will be plans for her to lose it eventually. And hopefully quite soon in real life. Don't know, like Charlotte. Sorry Charlotte. Next up in the promo machine is the New Day. Big E says, WWE Universe, don't you dare be sour, because this year's Royal Rumble is going to won be won collectively by the New Day. Kofi Kingston says, that's right, son. Now, I'm sure most of you are thinking, oh, it's the Royal Rumble. What kill cool spot is Kofi Kingston going to do? Well, guess what? All three collectively says, none. Xavier Wood says, you lot don't deserve it. However, we will let you in on a treat, which is the New Day main eventing Wrestlemania and then they break into a usual sing song because no day rocks no day rocks I probably chant a bit better but my as you can probably tell my throat's a little bit off at the moment and my voice is a bit kind of all over the place a D45 Xavier Woods is a dreadfully stale character and a change is really needed no skill improvements, and the dirt sheet has a lot of negatives that we'll need to fix with the new day. The Royal Rumble, where 30 men collide for one spot, but 29 of these men are mere mortals, whilst I have my gladiator Rusev, says Lana. Rusev will take it upon himself to eliminate 29 other superstars while he will head to glory. He will represent not only Russia, but Bulgaria and Europe, and show the world that we are the true Superpower. Rusev yells in the background, random Bulgarian words, before saying Rusev crush, Rusev mashka. So C-55, so still building Lana, but she looked lost out there, 
and receive came across very well. Next up, the arena is in complete darkness. We're here. Here come the Wyatt family. And as everyone gets out their cell phones, the fireflies are out. Harper, Rowan, Strowman, Wyatt, they're here. So basically just a, an emphatic entrance for this matchup for the Wyatt family. And a nice B-75 rating. The match itself flopped massively. And the match had some good action and average heat. Bray Wyatt defeated Braun Strowman and Harper and Rowan. Sorry, Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman and Harper and Rowan defeated John Cena and Kane in a handicap match in 12.56. When Bray Wyatt defeated Kane by pinfall with a standing senton splash. This was a C-54. So where's Nicky still in advances, but I really hope they get a better rating than this. I'm going to have to build everyone up because there is big, big plans for this feud going forward. But Braun Strowman's improving his performance skills. Negatives here. Quite a lot. Mostly Braun Strowman. God damn it, Braun. Next up, Cesaro is in the ring. And here comes the WWE United States Champion and his Demon Apparel. So an over the top entrance for Finn Balor as well to get that good rating in there of a B minus seventy two. Anything at this moment is a B minus or above is pretty much a positive for the way this mod is going. And about the feature great action and average heat, Finn Balor defeats Cesaro in seventeen thirty five by pinfall, with a brainbuster following interference from Carol Anderson. Finn Balor makes defence number six of the US title. B-76 is good. Carol Anderson debut is a badass gimmick, which unfortunately only gets a 58, and the US title storyline advances. No skill improvements. Uh, apart from the title prestige and inconsistency, a great match between Bauer and Cesaro. We're backstage with Renee Young, who has caught up with Finn Bauer and his friend, who has debuted during his WWE United States Championship match of defence against Cesaro. Renee Young says, Finn, congratulations on your victory tonight, but did you really prove anything tonight since you had to introduce a friend? Balor says, Renee, 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 I prove to the world that not only am I the undisputed US champion in the WWE, but unlike Cesaro, I have friends everywhere who are willing to come and support me. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard the rumours over the last month, but let me formally introduce to you my friend and the newest WWE superstar, the machine gun, Carol Anderson. And then, Carol Anderson, simple word, and this proves once and for all that the Bauer Club is r r r r real. Can do that anywhere good like Omega did, because his was really good. Uh, but yep, Carol Anderson is here, and the start of the Balor Club, those two, in it. So, Balor was fantastic, Machine Gun was underwhelming, and a D46 was the rating. So overall, so-so, Anderson was obviously low entertainment skills, uh, not very over in America, so we're going to build him up, and Renee, I felt like in this situation we had to put her in, although she doesn't possess great overness. Next up is Kevin Owens who has a promo, and he says, I stand before you as your WWE Intercontinental Champion, and with me being a prize fighter, there is nothing more that I would love to do than bring the WWE Intercontinental Championship and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship back to my family. As for you other 29 superstars, this is Kevin Owens' time, this is Kevin Owens' moment. You're all just going to be extras in what really is the Kevin Owens show. So. He thinks he's going to come in here, win both championships, and a nice C64 promo. Well, I say win both championships. Still a champion and be in the main event at WrestleMania to go for the heavyweight title. Another promo. I saw there's a lot of these during this, the, the show. We've got Barrett and Sheamus. Barrett says, WWE Universe, I've got some bad news for you. This year's Royal Rumble is going to come down to two men, myself and my good friend Seamus. Seamus says, that's right fella, myself and Barrett will work together to eliminate everyone until we, until we are the last two and declare the co-winners of the 2016 Royal Rumble 
match a C plus 70. My voice is going at the moment. No worker improvements and dirt sheet just has a poor gimmick of bad news. Bar it. Next up, we have the Miz cutting a promo. C60. I typed it out, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to have worked, which is a shame. Basically just saying um, that the WWE needs to break the attendance record at WrestleMania. They need that box office draw, they need that money maker on the billboards. And what bigger money maker, what bigger draw is there than Mr. Hollywood himself, The Miz. So, shame the text didn't come up, but that was the idea of the promo there. And low momentum, poor gimmick. But overall The Miz tends to give you an above average promo compared to most. And then we have the match itself, the Royal Rumble, actually drew quite a decent um, rating, I actually was really worrying about it, that's why it wasn't the main event. But in the match they had some good action and average heat, Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble in 59 minutes and 31 seconds. The other members of the final four were Finn Balor, John Cena and Bray Wyatt, with Finn Balor being the final elimination and Braun Strowman the most eliminations over the course of the match. As you know, the entrance in the Rumble were Del Rio, Barrett, Big E, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, Cesaro, Chris Jericho, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, Fandango, Finn Bauer, Dale Watame, Jack Swagger, James Storm, John Cena, Kalisto, Kevin Owens, Kofi Kingston, Luke Harper, Neville, the returning Randy Orton from his suspension, Rob Van Dam, Robert Roode, Roman Reigns, Rusev, the returning Ryback from his suspension, Seth Rollins, Sheamus, Stardust, and The Miz. Kofi Kingston and Braun Strowman were off, his, were off their games, which is disappointing because we're trying to push Braun to the moon. Those other could be turning heel, when is it going to happen? Most storylines advance with this segment because they were all in the match. Disappointingly, only a few worker improvements, which is Cesaro on flying. Ziggler on Rumble, Orton on Technical, Barrett on Rumble, The Miz on Performance Skills and Luke Harper on Technicals. There's going to be a lot of positives and there's going to be a lot of negatives in there as well. But most of them will be because of characters, inconsistency and low momentum. But overall at B79 for the Rumble, I'm quite happy with. Finn Balor goes flying over the top rope and Roman Reigns has done it again. Back-to-back -back Royal Rumble wins for the Big Dog and he has punched his ticket to the main event at WrestleMania 32 where he could potentially face his friend Dean Ambrose for the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. There's no confetti as we've got a title match next and Dwayne isn't here either because the WWE doesn't want him booed this time, even though Roman gets a good reaction from the crowd. Some pyro goes over as we do what WWE pretty much wants and we have made Roman look strong. But at B83, that's a good segment for Roman Reigns, as he has booked his ticket to the main event at WrestleMania, and he wins the Rumble again, in before the hate. Next up, we've got a small promotional video, which is just typing up the feud for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship between Dean Ambrose and his challenger, Brock Lesnar. They collide next. Lesnar enters the Asylum. The title storyline advances. Nothing else to report there as we get ready for our main event match. Which flops? Why do all my main events flop? And about the head, great action and great heat from the audience. Dean Ambrose defeats Brock Lesnar in 1528 by countout. Dean Ambrose makes defence number 3 of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This was a C plus 67. Heyman did some good work at ringside but the match suffered from a lack of psychology and it really could have used someone with the knowledge of how to construct a proper flow. God damn, neither do them having great psychology. But the title storyline has advanced. Lesnar's improving his performance skills. Just a match that didn't click, which is probably going to cause us to lose lots of pop and a terrible, terrible rating. Probably should have put the main event as the Royal Rumble. Lessons to be learned there. But we finished the show off, he did it, Dean Ambrose retains his WWE World Heavyweight Championship over Brock Lesnar, just. After a brawl on the stage in the ramp, Ambrose hits dirty deeds on the top of the stage and makes it back to the ring just before the 10 count, while Lesnar only makes it to the top of the ramp. Lesnar is incensed that Paul Heyman is holding him back. 
Lesnar wants to attack until this is a B plus 86. I had a feeling it was going to have a poor rating, so we're ending up with some big angles. The title storyline has advanced, just limited for being short because it's a two part angle. Roman Reigns' music hits and he heads to the ring. Lesnar sees this, sees this and decides he wants no part of Roman Reigns, so he heads to the back. Roman enters the ring. Him and Ambrose have a friendly stare down. They look at each other and embrace with a man hug, then a fist bump. Could this be your WrestleMania 32 main event for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? Now, the confetti comes down. A B-77. The two brothers and Arams celebrate the end of the show. And we get a B-74, which is increasing their pop in 36 regions. We've done it. We actually had a successful show. Holy shit. I thought the main event had screwed us, but the angles were enough to make sure we had a good show. So excellent. And only two people getting praised for a good performance. And that's Finn Balor and Cesaro. Balor seems pleased, as does Cesaro. Absolutely delighted with that. I thought it was going to fail because of uh, Ambrose and Lesnar. Well done to those two. So, feedback was pretty good. People enjoyed the show. We have Ricochet. As a mid carder. Welcome to the company. That was one of my signings. So we're getting a reveal here. That's one of my signings coming in. And we also have Matt Stryker as another commentator. So he's in as an announcer. Welcome Matt Stryker. Welcome back to the company. Well, let's have a look at our emails though. So Darren Young has returned to the company. He had a minor injury. That's obviously talking about uh, Ricochet and Matt Stryker joining the company. And the buy rate was a 6.49. So okay, pretty decent. And judging by the size, hopefully we can get more shows like that and hopefully at least get close to international before we end the series. I won't go to my decisions in case it's a spoiler because there is a lot of new signings coming. So we've got Roman Reigns guaranteed in the WrestleMania 32 main event. But who does he face? Next four weeks of build and Fastlane will determine that. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Royal Rumble. And I hope you, if you've not watched it already, you enjoyed the Royal Rumble this evening. So say thanks for watching, guys. We'll run this out to WrestleMania. Then we'll start getting preparation for TW 2016. And then we'll have a mammoth series, which is going to top the 147 episodes we had for TW 2013. So say thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you'd like to see more TW 2013 and eventually 16 content, you can hit that subscribe button. And any comments on the show, how hyped are you for TW 2016? Let me know in the comments section below. And as Xavier Woods likes to say, keep it tight. Bye bye, guys.